Thank you. Thank you, Augustine. Good evening to you, sir. Thanks for joining us. Uh, happy weekend and uh, please talk to us. You have eight minutes. Thank <clears throat> Good evening, Niger Watch. Good evening, everybody. Please, all protocols once again observed or duly observed. Actually, I know I hey, just have to run down. There are quite a lot of talking points, so, but I must find a minute or two to wish Victor Simon a better lot next time because I don't know. It's like I dot for him. He is African Footballer of the Year. It's a good achievement. I would like Nigeria to win, if only because of him, so that he can retain the title. Or he will stand a chance of retaining it for 2024 to match the record of Kanu Wampo, who is the only Nigerian to have won it twice, 1996 and 1999. And also to join the likes of Rashidi Yekini in 1993, Amunike 1994, Ikano 96, 90, Victor Ikpeba 97, Kano 1999, and then Osimen 2023. So all the best, Osimen. Better luck next time. No offside, your goal should count. Now, having said that, let me quickly do a whistle stop on a body judge stake on Atiku. Well, I think we say Syria contender. You know, in Nigeria, everybody, we don't bring morality to politics. Everybody feels it's my right. Every four years, you come and they'll be waving flag. We continue voting for you. It's no more. Those that have been voting since 1999, they are now 24 years old. If you add 24 to 18, I mean, how can? You cannot be now. But good luck to him. If he want to come and continue, let him continue. But all I know is that after this election, 2023, until the Southeast produces a presidential candidate, I can never converse with any other president. I want somebody to take me up on this. It will be a debate, a very robust debate, because no Nigerian is more Nigerian than any other Nigerian within the context of Nigeria. Now, on show, on a, what is it, the other one, the monarch that was uh, buried in a Quara state, a kitty local Koro town, a kitty local government. I didn't know they have, I have to search now. A kitty local government of Kwara State. Well, to me, oh, maybe I put it mildly. Probably people may disagree with me. Yoruba land is under attack, whether they like it or not. And do you know why this is? This is profoundly um, a sort of um, disappointing. The chief of arm, the commander in chief, is a Yoruba blood. The chief of army staff is from Southwest. The inspector general of police is also from the Southwest. I think the director of intelligence or something like that, that's something. So, so what else? I can understand that in the past, it used to be if you are traveling with a train from Abuja to Kaduna, they stop the train, they do a collateral damage, arrest everybody, or they stop them. But that is a different thing. Somebody might say, oh, don't travel by train. But this is a monarch, even in your palace. The other day, we were treated to four members of staff of a school and the school children taking 100 million being demanded. This, this Ekiti state, you two uh, traditional rulers, the same Ekiti state in which the member representing them at the House of Reps was crying. The same Yoruba and the Ekiti state. <clears throat> Look at Ebado. In a GRA, the Kuyu of Ebado, that is where they said Bola giving had a house. I think it's in Bodija or something like somewhere around there. Something exploded and they are telling us, say, illegal mine. Which illegal mine is living there? You know, when they like, oh, but this is my observation Yoruba land is under attack, severe one. But it's not for me to, I mean, I'm just, a, I, I can't say more than this. But if they, somebody can dis, 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 disapprove, I mean, sort of, uh, the, um, not uh, disagree with me. It's okay. It's only a fair comment. But uh, they should they should live up to expectation. They should look in ways. Something Dr. is happening, Sien. and they are not happy about that. Thank you. Eh? Uh, nobody would disagree with you. Before you came on the channel, this before you came on the channel, I was asking I was asking Mr. Helvis, when this guy said Yoruba Lokon, Now you are seeing two monarchs taken down in Ikiti, one in Kwara. The explosion in Ibadan. Does it mean that Yoruba ne pai pai con or Yoruba ne explosion con? So it maybe he put those words in parable. 
because of his own personal agenda. And those are the things that we cried. We told the people, don't vote for this guy because he doesn't have anything to offer. Okay, thank you. Okay, it's okay, using okay. your time or gas. Okay, yeah. well, it's, it's okay. We're educating ourselves. If maybe okay. I come, if, if if I didn't finish whatever I'm saying, second round, I thought, but I, I believe he's adding, he's adding a, a credit to it. That's good. Thank you very much. Give us a mandate. So let me just leave it at that. But let them remember that the military, the military architecture in Nigeria is in the hand of the Yorubas, and this is happening. Now, going forward in terms of all this. This is my perspective on defending Nigeria and everything. Let, now that, uh, is it Lagbaja who is in charge of, let them take audit. That's what they call auditing. Sometimes you audit. All the, you just take, how many of the, how many soldiers are in the battlefront? How many are carrying handbag for VIPs? Nobody went to Nigeria military school, Zaria. Or defense academy, and he was told that part of your duty when they commission you, you should be carrying handbag. Maybe you are with, you are you are you are safeguarding a minister's house in Asokuru, and the minister comes from say Anambra State or Imo State. Then the mansion he has in the village in Imo or in, or in Imo State or Edo anywhere, you should be guarding it because I'm, as I'm I I can tell you all these all these uh, ministers or maybe senators in Abuja, we, they are villages, not Abuja. You can't enter there. There must be somebody on duty 24 hours guarding it, whether the man is in the village for weekend or not. Is that part of what the taxpayer should pay for? So when you do audit, you withdraw these people and send them to plateau because that is where they are needed. By the way, you see, the fact, the one thing we tend to forget in when discussing defense in Nigeria or this in general is you have to ask yourself, what is the role of the military and what is the role of the police in Nigeria? The role that the military are playing is that of the police. Military are hard, not seen. The moment you see soldiers moving out with their trucks or whatever, they are going to the airport because they are going for external to go and protect the country or they are needed. Just like when they went to Ekomog. Or you see them leaving Kaduna barracks or just barracks and they are heading towards the Bokos Roka government. They are going there to quell something. Do it in a, just, just like a, how do they call it? In a quick fix. And then go back. The police is the people that keeps peace. In Nigeria, we are under police. I agree. I gave my formula. Now I'm, I'm giving a solution. 774 local governments. Recruit from every local government. Just say, who we want to recruit? Go to the local government headquarters and go and take a form. You fill it, you return it there. If you are screened successfully, you go for training. When you are commissioned, you come back to your local government. Nobody can, nobody can protect, defend, or even police or local government of a do state better than people of that area. Nobody can def nobody can protect my local government, Agwata, better than people from my Therefore, sending me from Agwata local government, Arambra State, to go and be policing in, Zoo, in, in, in somewhere in Zuru, KB State, or Ibarakpa, Gogo, you know, your state, it's a waste of time. Policing and uh, policing, uh, particularly internally, civ civilian defense, has a lot to do with anthropology. It has a lot. If that is the beginning and end of policing, sociology to some extent, but anthropology, you must know the nuances of the people because that's why they say police is your friend. You are there to maintain peace and defend them. Not to, all this military everywhere in Nigeria. As if we are, yes, we may be on that, but we are not doing it well. We are at numbers. Let us do audit. How many soldiers do we have? How many are in active duty? How many are carrying handbag? How many are collecting and mounting checkpoints between, a, um, what is it called? I'm going to see the boundary between Enugu and the Onisha, en Enugu and the Enugu State and the Anambra State. I'm mounting checkpoints from there to o Oka. How many are mounting checkpoints between a Newe to Onisha? How many are checking St. Louis cubes of sugar that some people bought from main market to go and retail in the village? I mean, we stop you. What sort of nonsense is that? And yet, people of Plateau are crying. Zamfara is being decimated. 25 local governments of Niger State, 12 are under, effectively, under the control of Boko Haram. I'm not saying, it's the governor that said it. Their flag, that their black flag with Arabic inscription, mounted there, steady. What is Nigeria doing about that? So, this idea of defending the country, yes, let us look, let us take an audit and decide how many do we really need? How many are on active duty? What are the, who are those people that are loafers? You can you can't commission an officer 
and then you bring him to stand in the sun and be cooking gone and be checking there. Is this a homo? Yes, put it here. Is this a St. Louis sugar? Okay, let's see this one. Let's see the receipt for what. If you didn't bring money, they, if you didn't give them money, they, they gone you down. What sort of nonsense are we talking about? Please, Nigeria, yes, we know we are being attacked left, right, and center. But our military are not doing the job they are supposed to do. The few that you may send to Tsanfara, they may be overpowered. Why can't they mop them up? What is the, why should military be staying on the road? In a civilian populated area, what are they doing there? Where is the police? So Nigeria, we got our priorities wrong. It's as if we don't we know what to do, but we don't want to do it. But because of that idea that you know somebody wants to flex muzzle, some people will be held down just to punish them, and some people will be doing that. That is just the thing. It's not that it's not ask any military man, they will tell you what they are supposed to do. Are they doing it? If they are doing it, how many of them? How many are doing it? It's just only a few. They send some people there, then the other ones are just why should they so why should the military man be in the village guarding the mansion of a senator when the senator is in Abuja? Why is it the job of the soldier everywhere you see them? They are guarding this, guarding this. If you are moving around, they say they, they have a, a advanced ad, 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 what is it called? Um, um, ad, is it advanced convoy for what? For what? So there was soldiers are being abused, it's an abuse of office. They are underutilized. They are, they are, they are pro propagating what is called disguised unemployment. You may think you have a job because you take a salary, but it's disguised because you are not doing what you are doing. They are not productive to that extent. The few that are doing the right thing, yes, but they are overwhelmed. So why should a soldier be in the street? Tell me. Why? Where is he happening? Anywhere in the world? Where can you see a soldier? Anywhere. What are you checking? Bring this uh, container. Bring this thing. Open it. That is the job of the police. That is the job. It's the police that we do all these things based on anthropology because they should have a tip off. Don't we have intelligence? Do not have. Why should why should um, why should a, a traditional ruler be pied in his throne? Don't they, don't there are there no intelligence around? When something happens, you don't you go beyond it. Why did this thing happen? CCTV. Let us check the movement in the last forty eight hours. Then you widen it. That's how you do something. Modern technology, modern everything is intelligence. Everything cannot just be undergone. You may carry gun and be in the sun 24 hours. You didn't see anybody to shoot. That is a waste. But yet something is happening somewhere. So in terms of defense, our people should, that's what, that's what they call root and branch examination. It's overdue. Even when we know how terrorism came into Nigeria from 2015, we know how it came in. These people were just imported just to disgrace Jonathan. Then after that, what happens? Now they've taken root. All we now hear is that uh, Funa will write a letter and some people won't discuss it. Who are you to write a letter telling the people of Benue Plateau should vacate? Who are you? A country with a C in C? That's why I asked that day. Where is the C in C? Where is the commander in chief? People talk of president, president, but the most important role is commander in chief. Every battalion must have a commander. But until the commander in chief, only one person gives the order, you can't really, you, you, you can you can't commit a nation to war. Where is the commander in chief? Nigeria is under attack. I agree. Then where is the commander in chief? Where is the commander in chief? That's what people should be asking. Where is our commander in chief? Nigeria is under attack. Where is the commander in chief? So these are the issues. These are them. I mean, when we want to let us be, let us have a reasoned debate. Let's, let's, let's look in ways. Look internally and say, look at our soldier. The root and branch examination. What really is happening? How many do we have? Okay, we have 100. We needed 500. The shortfall of 400. Meanwhile, those 100 that are having, what are they doing? Maybe 35 are only doing the right thing. The other ones, where are they? You mop them up. You tell them what to do. As simple as that, because I don't too much believe that maybe sometimes we just, maybe we leave the issue and then be begging the issue, sort of. Let's confront it. What audacity has Fona and Fulani National Movement to write a letter telling the people of Benue State to get out? Telling the middle of the people in the... You know, now, nobody's discussing it. It's, and they gave to 72 hours. By the time something happens in the next 48 hours or maybe one week, people will say, hey, why is the intelligence doing? Who are they? Can, can they get them arrested? Every market in Lagos, let me put it in context. 
you pay security fee to the local government council. All the businesses in Lego, they do it, particularly open market. But during the election time, part of when they were selling something, we are vandalized. Bond, the head of the market said, why should we pay? Why should we pay all these fees? Yet nobody secures our market. If that is the case, we invite IPOP to be doing it at night. Let the, the, the man, see, today the man is under lock and key. What else do you want? The man is under lock and key, under a rule of law. Why not charge him to court? But Fulani wrote a letter. Everybody kept quiet. Nobody discussing it. What if, what if, the, what if the people they destroy their goods write a letter? Tomorrow it will, it will be in CNN that they want to destabilize, they want to tear the country apart. And then all those apologies, they will then come and tell us, you tear the country apart. So what? Funam wrote a letter. You know it's an affront on the constitution to challenge a constitutional authority, telling the CNC, the only person that has the right to command the military in Nigeria is only the CNC. Only him, he has the final order. If he didn't give it, no way. Every military general is under him. Yet Funam, Funam is writing a letter to tell people that ancestral home, you should get out. People are still living in refugee camp. And nobody is saying anything because they are Fulanese. They even put it boldly. They arrested their leader. And so what? Why not charge the man to... Now, I said it here before. Charge the man to court. If you charge the head of the flying to court, if you convict him, good. If you don't, let him go. That is the way to do it. At London School of Economics, they were taught that it is better you allow a criminal to go scot-free than to convict an innocent person. As another example, you're on M25, firing on. You find out that somebody broke a traffic law and is on top of the speed, only one person in a car. You know that chasing him to enforce that law might lead to accident that will kill more than one person. Sorry, might buy more than one person. What do you do? You let him go and then track him through another way. That is how to do what they... That, you can't just say, oh, he broke, he broke the law. We have to move. Hey, it's only one person in a car. So if you lose, you lose only him. Then to mobilize and they start doing all the, maybe in the course of doing that, something will happen. Why not use so many gadgets and get the person? There are certain things Nigerians are doing that. When you reason it, you now say, sometimes I said, I don't, want to, I don't want to be speaking. But when there are things we have, common sense. Yes, we need the army to protect us. The way it is, we're under attack. But let us do all this. Who do we, who, who do we de de deploy to somewhere? Niger, what? Let me wait. Let me stay here. We talk on CBN uh, and dollar dollar issue in my, my next round. This is so compelling. That's why I have to waste all the whole time. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Ah, today is Friday now. Kitchen things. So in and out. Thank you for your patience. Anywho, everybody has given a lot of submission today, and um, I just want to address a few things. I'm not even going to mention names because I don't want to drag it. Um. In Nigeria right now, we are at war. It's not about Fulanese, in all honesty. We are the ones killing ourselves. When you decide on your own to allow foreigners to come and take over your space, it's no longer the blame of Fulanese anymore. That is why I agree with Tunaja. You have a passenger. This went on. I mean, it's just like saying somebody came to rob you, but who sent the robber? You need to point the, the, in the direction of the powers that be. And they are from the north, they're from the south, they're from the east, they're from the west. Can you please tell me why the governors of every state will fold their hands and watch our people die? And everybody is shouting, full and full and full and full and How many? Corruption. How many? Corruption. How many? Corruption. Huh? Corruption is making them to fold their arms. Oh, good. That's not and an excuse. Psycho fancy. It Thank is. You. That's the position. So, full and is just an excuse used to kill ourselves. Oh, full and the bogeyman. Yeah. But who authorized that? Fulani in the two states. These are people that want all your governors wanted to devote land to terrorists. And you're calling Fulani, Fulani, Fulani. How many people, how many are these Fulani people compared to all the Nigerians in this country? So you see, 
technology will go a long way, but Nigeria will fight everything technology. Because going from what happened during the election, technology was our saving grace. But guess what? It was killed. Technology and corruption doesn't go together. And that is why right Nigeria will always resort to paper and pen, manual roster, a roll call, things that you can burn. If you have a poor verdict, you burn down the courthouse. If you don't want to, I mean, it just goes on and on. So with all respect to the Fulani tribe, the Fulani is just not responsible for everything in that country. We are the ones killing ourselves. Your governor, your 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 command, your your, your commander in thief, the C in T. GCFR, Grand Certificate Forger of the Republic, is outside the country. Does not even care whether his people are dying, and you're calling full and full and full and full So please let us ask ourselves questions. We are the ones doing it to ourselves to make sure a few stay in power. And until something is done about that, I don't know how it's gonna happen. These agents of the devil will keep running all over the country and will keep shouting full and full and full and full and full. Is it today full and started living amongst us? Like somebody right here said, I'm not full. Are there no full all over the Sahel? So until we learn to guard our own borders, we're not going anywhere. And the governors are complicit in this. And it's from the Oga on top. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, God bless you, uh, Madam Luke. Okay, let me go to um, the next person to speak to us, which is Augustine. Augustine, thank you very much, sir. Please give us your final submission. Four minutes. Okay, th thank you, Niger Watch. Actually, although these four minutes, I will leave out uh, those issues of Central Bank and uh, show uh, to me, people have talked that it's a bread and butter issue. Now, Talking about how many soldiers America has, I so I've supplied the link here. America has military base all over the world. They recruit because they have to put their soldiers in every part, part of the world. If you go to that link, those in America, I think Black Panther is listening, you can do the research and tell me how many military bases America has abroad. Nigeria has no military base anywhere in the world. So whatever soldiers we have should be internal unless they are needed. This is it. 750 military bases in around more than 80 countries of the world. So if America has 30 million soldiers, it's justified. That's one. Because somebody will tell you America has so so number of soldiers. That is based on need. Because they need to put their soldiers every part of the world. Nigeria, do Nigeria do that? No. So that is the danger of a single story or deliberately falsifying facts. That's one. Now, on this issue of Fulani, as if they have, not, they, have no, no, they have 119 base sites in Germany, yeah, 119 yeah. in Japan, 73 yeah. in South Korea, 44 yeah, I mean, in Italy, yeah, some, another. Some, wow. Yes, yeah, Vietnam see, has almost. No, no, excuse me, hey, hey, hey. excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Stop please. making excuses and lying to please. people. Excuse me. See, Niger Watch, take control. That's why you see me keep quiet. Nobody should dare don't, say don't PIM. Address, Nobody okay. should ever say PIM again. Be you anybody. No matter the compound fool you think you are, or a congenital one for that matter. Nobody should ever say PIM. These are people that will tell you now the can is responsible for the death of 40,000 people. Till today, no evidence. More, getting to two months, no evidence. Provide the evidence they are running from, health, uh, from, uh, uh, from pillar to post. Now the can is responsible for the death of 40,000 people. Where is the evidence? Publish it. This is US military vases. They say the facts. It's not me. So America can recruit 100 million people if they want because they have need. In Nigeria, you have to do audit. What are our soldiers doing? But I don't want to dwell on that because of my time. Now, on Fulani, according to Professor Nigo Tite, his late man, foremost professor of sociology, the first public relations officer of Investor of Nigeria and Soka Students Union, 1963, who had his PhD from Investor of London, he wrote a thesis on the Urobo political system. The man said Nigeria has over 300 ethnic groups. For the avoidance of doubt, let me stop at 200. Has any ethnic group in Nigeria ever written a letter telling fellow Nigerians to vacate? Has anybody done it? Only the Fulanis are doing it. And when we call them, our people will tell me, Fulani is not the problem. Not the... 
Has the Urobo written a letter telling the people of Benue State to vacate? Has the Soko written a letter? Has the Eastern people in Edo written a letter? Ibo, Yoruba, Nupe? Has the House has written a letter? I'm asking. It's only the Fulani. Why? What constitutional provision empowers Buhari in November 19, 2019 to go to Cairo and say every Fulani should come and live in Nigeria? What, what, what branch of the constitution says so? Where is it done? Why didn't Obasanjo go to Bene and said every Yoruba should come and live in Nigeria? Why didn't Obasanjo go to Cuba? Yoruba are everywhere in the world, even in Brazil, practicing their... Why didn't Obasanjo bring them in? Now look at the genesis of what we are suffering. I want somebody... I, see, Niger Watch, I bet you, I, I, want to, I want to make a request. Bring that finance letter. It's, it's a matter for national importance. Since the senators cannot debate it, we will debate it here. People in Bedouin State are under threat. How can you tell people to vacate? Who are you? Where is it done? That is an affront on the CNC. That's what I'm asking. Where is the commander in chief? Where is the can 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 the, the what is it called? What is, can the job people write a letter to tell the people in Bedouin State to vacate? The full line nationality, they said it. That's why I said if you are holding their leader, try the leader in court. If he's found guilty, so be it. If not, set him free. Let me now know why these people are writing this letter. And nobody is debating it. And somebody is telling me that they've... I'm not calling Fulani out for nothing. For God's sake, the definition of democracy that I learned is from a Fulani man. The name is Dr. Isuf Dati Baba Ahmed. Bachelor's degree, economics, investor of Medugri. Master's degree, economics, investor of Medugri. Uh, investor of Medugri. MBA, investor of Cardiff in Wales. PhD. University of Westminster in London. He defined democracy as government of the people who are ready by the people who are ready for the people who are ready, say Fulani man. You know, it's not a question of calling Fulani out. Fulani nationalist movement wrote a letter. It's an affront on the country. Where is the CNC? You tell a, a session of the country to vac vacate for what? So the TVs in Bedouin should get out. The Biram in Plateau should go away. For what? Where they've been living? I don't want to be politically correct. That's why sometimes I don't like to debate because I, I, I believe in enlightened academic intelligent debate. Let us face it. Nobody is, nobody is talking about it. Okay, that's what Mararita is saying. Supposing it's an Iwanian that wrote that letter on behalf of Ndibo, today Nigeria will be on fire. People will go back to 1966 and start to interpret the, the coup of January 15, 1966. Supposing it's a Bini people that wrote it. That these people should have. Do you think we? Do you think Nigeria will contain us? Why should they trick flying things with kid glove? Naja to Mohammed was the person Madarita is referring to. Naja to Mohammed, the lady who visited Tinubu in London when he was sick or those days. Naja to is the wife of Dr. Bala Mohammed, former political advisor to Abu Bakr Karimi, 1979. The man was one was spied because of his political ideology. He believed in Talakawa and the wife. Najatu was the student union leader at ABU Zaria during, during her days. She took it up. That's why she's a very, she's a very powerful woman. She traveled to go and meet. Imagine the, imagine, the, imagine the courage. And look at what Inubu said. So that's why these things are happening. Otherwise, how can you be a commander-in-chief? Somebody will write a letter, published, that a section of the country under which you have sworn to protect, defend, and preserve. Should, should, the, person, the people should vacate. And it's not and, and it's not causing an outrage. When you call the flag, is it people that wrote it? Is it the Yoruba that wrote the letter? Is it not the Flanese? Why? Why is people not talking about it? Why? That's a security breach. Something must be done about it. Don't take them for granted. Yes, they gave a reason you holding their leader. Try the leader quickly. Tell them you are the leader is in court and people will see it. That's what I believe in. If he's not found guilty, let him go. Everybody cannot be treated like a man. They cannot. I'm not making excuses for them. But since you've arrested them, every, there's what they call fun, fundamental human right and the rule of law. Everybody is equal the law before the law. And you can't breach anybody's fundamental human right. They have the, even, even, a, even an armed robber has the right to move about. If you charge into court, what nonsense are we doing in, the, in this, this country? And somebody will be telling me that Fulani is not. Yes, I'm calling them out because of that letter. Otherwise, I won't call them out. It doesn't mean I hate them. You that is denying it or not calling them out, it doesn't mean that you love them. That is hypocrisy of the highest order. I, 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 don't, I, I don't do that way. I say it the way it is. 
Confront me with facts and let and let, and let, and let us debate it. Try the leader. If you try him and find him guilty, good. If you not, let him go. You release him. You can't hold on. That's why they gave you a letter. They said they give automatic. Because you can everybody cannot be named the cannot. Because they hold him. Everybody now feels like, even those that wish him dead. That even on, that is on tape. Saying that the cannot should should, should, should reply there. Tomorrow they will be talking nonsense. Like that, let me let me leave it here. Thank you. Uh, can I speak? Yes, you can. Okay, you know, you passed instruction earlier on say everybody should stay pen. So I was, uh, you know, I was scared if I can say something. You know, I not say that your instruction that time, you know, <laughs> me myself, I fear for you. You will take past that order. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, uh, because I've learned not to interject people. I've learned it. That's why if you see, I've, I've, I've been dropping notes here. What I should have spoken on was central bank and show, but I felt that that is that can there is not of too much of a, a national importance. I mean, compared to the security issue we are debating, this full and in letter we should bring it here, read it, and debate it. It's an affront. You don't do that where you have a CNC. Who are you to threaten people that they should go? Thank you, Oga. Uh, Chris, you are calling back again, sir. You have only one minute. You need to go. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Nanja, but you know, Quite, um, sir, one minute. There's something, yeah, there's something called uh, the dilemma of um, a single-sided story. I think it was by Chimamanda Adichie. You see, I listened to Madame's look um, submission where she was trying to exonerate the full of this completely. I think that was a one-sided view. Because now, I, I'll refer to two things that she made mention of. She said, why are they not doing it in other African countries? Madame, look, they did. Look at the history in Senegal in Gambia, in Central African Republic, in many African countries, the, the difference was even in Ghana, the difference was that they were chased out from those places. They were not allowed to succeed. The only reason they succeeded in Nigeria is because, of course, of our corrupt leaders. So for we to just completely say they are not responsible, it is our corrupt leaders, no. It is their style, they are responsible. It's just that we are unfortunate to have leaders that have yielded to what they wanted they did it in all these african countries that i mentioned it's there on the internet and secondly and madam look is there any other tribe in nigeria that go to other people's states and want to take over those states is there any other tribe in nigeria that they have um, did something like ruga for where the presidency will want to allocate land in every state of the uh, federation to some group of people I guess there are no other tribes. Are there other tribe that goes to people's farm and attack the indigenous people in Nigeria? There are nobody like that apart from the Fulani. So if you exonerate them, if you exonerate them, I think it is one sided story. If you try to say that, uh, okay, our leaders are corrupt, that's why they succeed, I will accept that. But to say that they are not responsible, it is actually the dilemma of a one sided story because. All the evidences are there. I've never seen a Benima go all the way to Plato or any other part of the country for that matter to do what these guys are doing. And just before they left, there is this waterway bill that Buhari wanted to smuggle in. Waterway bill means that all, all everywhere you have water in Nigeria, it belongs to the federal government. They wanted to cede those lands to the Fulanese. But thank God um, his tenure ended and they couldn't do that. There's okay. no that tribe again in Nigeria that do what these Fulanis are doing. So that is why we are calling them out. And they have done it in every other African country, but they were chased out. It is their talk. It is a one sided story that you just submitted. Thank you very much. Mr. Right, Niger Watch, 10 seconds, please. 10 seconds, Mr. Niger Watch. Go ahead, go ahead, madam. Thank you. Uh, my my uh, loyal friend there, Chris Dublin. Listen, I did not exonerate the Fulanese. My question to you is why are they? Uh, why is one tribe holding Nigeria ransom? Is my question to you. Why are they allowed to get away with it? We have over how many tribes in Nigeria? Why is it the Fulanese allowed to get away with this? Is my question to everybody. We not get the answer. Shame. The answer to that, Madam Look, I gave it to you. I said corruption. That, I think that's is that, that, that's, an, is that, that, an, that, that's is that an excuse? It is. That, that is the situation we have. 
if thank you. you. Test, if, one, if you go, if you go beyond that, okay, it will be a one-sided argument. If you just step okay. out of that line, is a one-sided. It's totally argument. inaccurate. How can we talk uh, like this? Thank you. Unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you all. Everybody have given their submission. Like I said, uh, any time we give on this platform is still not enough for us to talk about the things that are affecting us in Nigeria. But we come to the end of this broadcast. But let's continue to talk, put our voices out there. Somehow, someday, we'll have a better Nigeria in our time. But the way things are going on right now, it's not looking good at all. You know, um, oh, JJ Breadman. Jab <laughs> now, why you call this place? Of course, since now, Mr. Yeah? Mr. Evans, good evening, sir. Let me answer Madam Luke quickly, okay? Go ahead. The One minute why... you have. Go ahead. Go ahead. The reason why Sulani is getting away with it is because between 1963 and 1977, when the Igbos were fighting there, if the rest of Nigerians had your network is not at that time did not succeed. We will, not, we will not be where we are now. No more bad government in Nigeria. In other words, the only media have been, that have been consistent speaking against the bad government and for the purpose for reform In other words, yo! Everyone in Nigeria saying that you guys are the number one. 